Hey guys, Tyler here. I've been asked recently by a couple of people to run them through what I pack in my bag when I go to a shoot. And my answer is always the same, right? It depends on the shoot. Not everything goes in my bag to every single photo shoot. So today I wanna walk you through the gear that I use, how I use it, how it might be helpful for the shoots that you might be interested in. My gear is fairly simple. I don't have a lot. I, I can fit everything I own into a bookshelf, like a three tier Walmart bookshelf. And uh, it's, it's nothing complicated. So first things first, I shoot with the Canon R6. I love this camera, it's simple. Um, the only thing I wish was different about it was I wish it had a little bit more in the megapixel department. It's at 20.6 megapixels, I believe, which is fantastic. But if you wanna crop in more in your pictures and shoot wide, you gotta have more megapixels in your camera to get that. But overall, great camera, I've never had a problem. I'll probably use this for years to come. I don't wanna sell it. To pair with this R6, first things first, batteries always come with me to every shoot extra batteries for this r6 um, you can never have too many batteries i do recommend get canon batteries if you're shooting on a canon camera because they will last you much longer and you'll have less problems when it comes to how your camera functions i've used off-brand batteries and i've had problems when i've used off-brand batteries so get canon brand batteries highly recommend also take a bunch of SD cards on the shoot. Uh, I take these to every shoot. There's like six SD cards in here. They're all 128 gigabytes each. SanDisk Extreme Pros, uh, 128 gig. They're good SD cards. Uh, remember with SD cards, you get what you pay for. So if you get cheap SD cards, you might run into some problems, um, but I recommend the SanDisks, they're great. Now to get into the juicy stuff, the lenses. Start at the smallest one, the RF 85 F2. This is a great portrait lens. If, if you hire me or if someone hires me to take headshots or just portraits of them and maybe them and their significant other, I'll use this lens. I love it because I can get a lot of great background compression. So with the 85 millimeter, it pulls the background in closer and it blurs it out all nice. And then it keeps the subject nice, crisp and clear. So you get some good separation between the subject and the background. This thing is great. It's also flattering for the face. So if you use an 85 millimeter, you'll have a really good image of the face, especially if you're doing close up, it'll compress it nicely. Whereas if you're using a wide lens on a face, sometimes you can get some weird looks, like the nose looks really pointed. The 85 will make your image look awesome if you're shooting people or headshots or something like that. Sweet lens. The next lens that I love to use is the RF 50 1.2 this thing is a beast it's the best prime lens i've ever used but this thing is awesome for like mid portraits like you know torso and up or like run and gun photography street photography the 50 millimeter i think is super versatile i love using it and um with the f 1.2 you can really really let a lot of light in on, uh, on the sensor, you can get some really cool results. The only thing that uh, you might wanna be careful of if you're considering shooting 1.2 with your aperture is that if you're shooting with people as your subject, it can be hard to make sure everything's in focus. So your depth of field is super razor thin. So to get both eyes in focus, it can be, can be a struggle. So make sure if you're doing that, do it well, focus on the eyes, make sure both of them are there. Um, but oftentimes I find myself stopping down to like F 1.8 or even F2 or more to make sure that everything's in focus because the last thing you want to do is get home, upload your photos to Lightroom, and you've missed focus on your pictures. Bad idea. So that's the RF 50 millimeter. I love that lens. The next one is the RF 28 to 70 F2. It's a sweet lens, uh, really versatile for um, things like family shoots like so i like to shoot at the higher focal lengths like maybe the 50 to 70 for like getting family shots especially of like five or six people because you really can make them stand apart from the background at that focal length but sometimes the kids are running around if there's younger kids in the shoot and you want to zoom out and zoom in and just catch some of those moments i love 
the 28 to 70 for that purpose. When I was doing my audit of my photos last year in Lightroom, I found that most of my pictures were between the 24 and 70 range. I'd probably take it to any kind of event, like a wedding and family shoots. Those are kind of the bread and butter for this lens, for me at least. Again, everyone uses these differently, but this is how I use the lens. And then last but not least, the 70 to 200 EF 2.8 lens. I want to upgrade at some point to the RF version of this lens, but honestly, I have no need to. This thing produces like top notch, sharp images. I use it mainly for equine photography uh, so I can stay a safe distance away from horses as they do their thing and I can capture them. I use it for weddings too, so sometimes you don't really want to be in the front of the wedding venue taking pictures of the bride and groom. Sometimes you just want to be in the back and zooming in and getting some of those shots. So basically, if I'm going to a shoot, I'm gonna take some sort of combination of these four lenses, right? So if I'm shooting just headshots, it's gonna look different. Probably gonna take these two lenses. If I'm shooting something that is gonna require more versatility, like I need to be moving around a lot or zooming in and out, I'm probably gonna take like this 28 to 70 or the uh, 70 to 200. Uh, so it really depends on what I'm shooting. And oftentimes you get the question, which is the best lens? Well. I can't answer that question for you. It really depends on what you like to photograph. I can't tell you that an 85 is the best lens for you if you like to shoot landscapes, right? Those kinds of pictures would require a wider angle, like maybe a 24 or even a 15 or an 18 millimeter lens. So it really depends on your style of photography. I do have another camera to back up this R6. It's the Canon RP. It's the one I'm filming on right now. And then the lens that's on that camera is a 20 four to 70 EF lens. It's what this lens replaced. That combination is my run and gun. So I, I love to take that places and, and shoot. Moving on to flashes. If I'm at a wedding venue or something where I just need a little bit of extra light, I'll take this along. It's the Canon 430 EX3 RT. It just goes right on top of the camera, does the job. Um, I don't use flash a ton simply because most of my shoots are outdoor. I'm usually at a park or something, someone's backyard. I don't really shoot in studios that much. I don't have one. I don't own one. And the clients rarely like to pay for studio time. So I often find myself shooting outdoors, which is not a problem. The way my gear is oriented, I like shooting outdoors. So it's a lot of fun. Um, but in situations where I do need an off-camera flash, I have a Godox AD200 Pro. And I pair this with a Easy Glow softbox. Like I think it's a 36 inch uh, beauty dish is what it's called. Um, but just to soften the light when it comes down on, on the subject, especially for like corporate headshots or um, just single person portraits, that kind of thing. It's a, it's a nice flash. I have yet to use it a ton, but um, I'm excited to break it in. Honestly, I, I've tested it on my family and uh, it, it's a really cool piece of equipment, especially when paired with uh, like the RF50. There's one more piece of gear I like to take along with me, but it's this little Ricoh GR3. It's just a point and shoot camera. Um, this is how big it is. Like this thing could fit in your pocket. My iPhone is bigger than this camera. It's got its quirks, but this thing is sweet. I love shooting with it. I can program film simulations into this camera, kind of like you can with a Fuji film. And um, it's not quite the same. I think Fuji is a little bit better but depending on what you do with this camera, you can get some really cool shots. I enjoy taking pictures of my family with this camera. I'm gonna start taking this with me on shoots now so just to get some behind the scenes stuff. That's all for this gear rundown. Like I said, rather simple. I don't own a ton of gear. This is pretty much all the photography equipment I own other than the lights and the camera that I'm shooting with now. I'd be interested to hear your feedback on what do you like to shoot with? If you like this content, if you want more, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Instagram, let me know what kind of content you'd be interested in learning about. One of my goals this year is to create more content like this. And when someone asked me to send them a gear rundown, I figured perfect opportunity to create a little video explaining what I pack in my camera bag going to photo shoots. So this is what I use and it has done me well. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a message. I'd be happy to answer them.